chili palmer obviously comes from deep inside you somewhere and you were telling me before we started that this is a real guy who you met once upon a time with a great name and you've taken him off from being a loan shark to a hollywood producer and now to somebody who wants to get into the records business yeah so where's he from well where, chili where the, come from the real chili palmer when i met him worked for a friend of mine who was a uh, private eye in miami beach and chili palmer had before that he had been uh, connected uh, mob connected somewhat and uh, had take had brought some money down to florida to put on the street shylock money loan shark and uh, when his boss was uh, eliminated shot and killed and i think it was colombo then chili was out of business and he met my friend bill marshall and went to work for him did a lot of surveillance work for him he was doing a lot of divorce uh, divorce work then and uh, Chili was he was a he was a, he was a tough guy he was a fun guy to be with though he I, he went to uh, Puerto Rico and I was researching one of my books Glitz so he's the real thing but he had no interest in movies now the, the villainy of the Hollywood movie industry is well known and well documented in your book get Leo get shorty whatever you want to call it uh, the record industry the the evilness of the record industry is perhaps less well known and that's what you're getting into now with be cool so what did you have yeah, to do well, to get yourself I think into that, it i think that there are more crooks or people having been associated with uh, mobs the mob or would like you to think that they were associated with the mob street kind of guys who are who 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 get into a hustle easily who are looking for a hustle who are looking for something that they can talk their way into and out of talkers you know well this is right down my alley where guys who like to talk you know and, and you find out that that uh, historically this was the case when when my publisher said what about the music industry I said well I'll look into it well as soon as I started to write read about the independent promoters who could make or break a record that all these guys were and this is back in the time of payola all these guys were had some kind of a mob connection that uh, I thought yeah I can I can I can go to, to town with these guys because Chile probably even knows some of them, you see? So it worked, it worked perfectly. You went to, what, some record executive's office and you sat and watched him on the phone for two hours just to see yeah, how I, he talked? Yeah, he was the national uh, promotion manager at uh, Maverick. And, and I sat with him and just listened to him for two hours. Did you understand phone. what he was saying? Uh, 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 you're my man, bro. I understood that. <laughs> Give me some spins. <laughs> yeah, I understood enough of it. It was it was fun, you know. And and I'm sure he was putting it on a little bit for for my benefit, you know. But he loves the scene in the book. It's not word for word, of course. Yeah. I had to paraphrase certain things, but it's pretty much it's the it's the feeling of it, you know. 32 of your books have been optioned for movies. Or bought. It's a bought, right. That's amazing. Do you know what it is that you do that makes Hollywood producers read something that you write and say, I can instantly see a, a movie in that? A yeah, successful movie. Well, they, they, or unsuccessful has been the, also the case in the past. Uh, but what they see is a story told in scenes moved with dialogue you know what is that that's a that's a script no, but there's more to it than that well yeah there the and the trouble is that when you take the uh the manuscript 350 or so pages down to 120 page shooting script an awful lot of the good stuff is gone yeah because plot is not doesn't interest me that much there's always a plot the, i just work out a plot as we go along where does the notion of the funny bad guy come from why do you like him so much uh <clears throat> well, they're, they're, most of them aren't trying to be funny. They're funny because they're dumb. Most bad guys are dumb. Most guys who get into crime are dumb, or they wouldn't get into crime. Uh, well, Jackie Brown or Rum Punch began with the idea of doing a book about a bail bondsman, because I don't think they've been treated well at all in, in movies or books. He's always a shabby-looking guy who... who uh, well, you know what they look like, or he's in his office in his undershirt, an old sweaty undershirt. And uh, I thought, I'm going to do a respectable bail bond. He has great integrity in your book. Yeah. Yep. And I, and I, uh, so there was a time when Quentin wanted to buy rum punch at the time of uh, 
reservoir dogs mm -hmm. but he didn't have any backing or any money but my agent said we'll save it for you because we liked them a few years later we offered him five titles that were available and Miramax bought four of them for him rum punch being one of them so he decided he was going to do that one because he said it was the best female part that he had seen in a long time uh, and we talked on the phone about it uh, just before he started shooting he called me again and he said I've been afraid to call you for the past year and I said why because you're changing the title of my book and you're starring a black woman in the lead and he said yeah I said do what you want I think your ideas are great I love your movies how'd you know all that in instead well it, it was around oh, okay it was around he thought he was gonna surprise me with it hmm. you know but I do have an agent in Hollywood so uh, there are no secrets so I said go ahead why didn't you end up in the car business in the car business yeah your dad was in the car business right well, my dad was with General Motors for <coughs> nearly all of his life. And you lived then, in Detroit most of your life. Yeah. but People uh, in Detroit work in the car business. And I wrote about cars. I wrote car ads, Chevrolet ads for seven years. But uh, what do I drive? I drive a Volkswagen. <laughs> you, know? um, you drive a Volkswagen on the streets of Detroit. Yeah, and cars don't interest me that much. Okay. I've had, uh, like my son used to say, why don't you get a Cadillac? Why don't you drive a Cadillac when he was younger? And I said, because I can have any kind of car I want. So you drive a Volkswagen? Yeah. <laughs> That's gutsy in Detroit. <laughs> uh, if I go to Michigan on Elmore Leonard Day, <laughs> what, what activities am I going to enjoy? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to? We, I think we, that, that was a one-time affair. It was sometime in January where I got uh, a proclamation from the governor uh, I'm trying to remember if I voted for him or not, but I got a <laughs> proclamation for him from him, and I got this key to the city of Birmingham. Birmingham, Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, not Alabama. And uh, what does the key open? That was no, it doesn't. And it looks like it looks like a beer bottle opener, <laughs> but it but it isn't. It looks like a church key, <laughs> as yeah, opposed right, to yeah, right, exactly. Okay. Yeah, no, it won't get you very far. Uh, <laughs> on, I mean. Uh, a showing up on that day you're not going to get anything I read a wonderful account of the conversation you recently had with John Travolta to get him I guess a to read be cool and then B obviously to be interested in reprising his role as Chili Palmer and you wanted to talk be cool oh yeah and well, he wanted to talk about <laughs> something else well I, I called I had been bugging my agent for well months has he read it yet and he said, God, why don't you call him up and ask him? I said, well, give me his number. Well, I took a couple of days. See. Finally, I get the number, and I call him up, and he's out on a boat somewhere. So I left my number. Four days later, he returns the call. I said, well, have you read it yet? And he said, oh, he said, I'm tired. He said, I just finished uh, civil action. He says, I'm not reading anything. I'm not doing anything, taking it easy. He said, but uh, my friend, some of my friends that have read it, and I, I respect their judgment, they said it's, 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 it's a good one. He's, they said it's, worth, it's better than Get Shorty. He said, oh, but you know what? He said, uh, I just bought a 707. I said, oh, yeah? 707, yeah. A jet. Big airplane. He flies. He flies. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so when I got off the phone, uh, my wife Christine said, what were you talking about? <laughs> All you said was, oh, wow. Gee, really? A bedroom? Hmm. What? I said he just bought a. He was telling me he bought a 707. What do you say to a guy who bought who's bought an airliner? You know, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> but how can he not make this picture though? That's Particularly because he'll make 20 million bucks if he makes this picture. But. Or more. And and uh, yeah, I think he'd be nuts if he didn't do it. Can anybody else play that part? Well, I think I think there are any number of guys who could play it, but. He's, he's Chili Palmer right now. And I wondered when I was writing it, when I started to write it, if I could picture him. Because when I wrote Get Shorty, I wasn't picturing anyone, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I had no trouble picturing him, yeah. seeing him, hearing him. So, I, oh, I'm, I'm quite sure. I'm sure he'll do it. Do you feel cool? You are cool. Do you feel cool? You don't think of a 73-year-old guy in suburban Detroit as a cool guy. What's, you, what's you cool? You are a pretty cool guy. What's cool? 
See, to me, it's being yourself, being not playing roles, not being pretentious, just being exactly who you are. That's cool. I think that's about it. What more can you do, right? <laughs> if you try anything else, then you're, uh, you're overacting. If that's cool, you're the Ice King, mister. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thank you. <laughs>